Welcome to Podcasting and Platforms. My name is Chris Spangle, and we are doing another episode of our Q&A. And this one comes from Alan Kogan. I have been on his podcast, very good podcast. And he wrote in on Podcasting and Platforms Instagram, quote, how do I find a clear direction? Everyone wants to do what Joe Rogan does, just talk and have fun. And while you can do that, not many will listen. Rogan has a cast of colorful characters and a bit of fame prior to his podcast. For me, starting from zero, I've focused on the quality of the look and sound of everything, which has largely allowed the actual content to suffer. You are not alone, Alan. This is a common thing. And I want to introduce the idea that podcasting is now more like writing a book than doing a talk radio show. When I started in 2007, you had things like Don and Drew and uh, Two Guys, One Brain, podcasts that were a little bit more free-flowing. When I started We Are Libertarians in 2012, it was a bunch of guys sitting around talking about stuff. And there is definitely some benefit to those kind of shows where you feel like you're sitting around the kitchen table having conversations, but it demands that the host is well-timed in keeping the conversation moving. I wasn't always th that demands that the characters on the podcast are interesting and sometimes people are less interesting than they think <laughs> and it's really up to the host to know exactly what interesting is and understand the mission of the podcast to make it all work out joe rogan is an interesting person even if he can be a little repetitive he still brings on these really interesting people and has a variety one of the secrets to his success is variety you're not hearing jujitsu talk every single podcast. So you can skip those if you're not interested. But you stick around because there may be a political guest that you like or a comedian that you like or maybe Roger Waters talking about Pink Floyd interests you but you don't really care about the holistic doctor talk, right? But there's something for you in that feed so you stick around. It keeps you surprised. There's novelty in it. And novelty is incredibly important in creating content because people want to be surprised by what they hear. They want an aha moment. How do you find a clear direction? You have to figure out your voice, which is the thing that makes you interesting, the thing that makes you generate an aha moment for your listener. It takes a while to figure that out, right? Guys sitting around drinking beer talking about X subject can be very powerful, right? There's doctrine and devotion in the Christian world. They're just some guys talking about reformed theology, and they've built a great audience because they have strong characters individually, and they also bring strong characters in to participate in that conversation. We Are Libertarians was always successful because... We had strong characters as co-hosts. I keep using the word characters because, again, let's go back to that concept of writing a book versus hosting a talk radio show. In talk radio, 25 years ago, 30 years ago, you could command a certain amount of audience because of a lack of choices. There were 13 radio stations that you could choose from in your area, and so you could get away with having somebody that was a little less interesting on in the morning. And then the people who were more interesting, like Bob and Tom, like the Howard Stern show with strong characters, zoomed past those people who were just reading news and traffic updates and talking about knitting. And uh, this local thing that's going on that some salesperson said we need to have them on because they're doing a buy, right? <laughs> Podcasting is does not benefit from what radio had or what television had when there were three channels. There is a myriad of choices. There are 4 million podcasts. 155,000 of them are active. And your competition is now the office ladies and Joe Rogan. And so you have to find guests that are incredibly interesting or you yourself have to be interesting. How do you do that? How have I found audiences? How have I developed my character as a person? How do I find a clear direction for what I do? So for the Chris Spangle Show, the clear direction is helping you understand current events and doing it through vulnerability and helping you to understand what your friends are talking about through interviews, through conversations amongst friends, through talking with nonprofits, through using history, through using church, right? I just did an episode on Christopher Columbus Day, and I have a very strong opinion about it, and I wanted to basically write a research paper about my opinion. I had to go and do research and figure out why is Columbus Day important, who is it important to, why is it called Indigenous People Day? Why is that important to them? Who was Christopher Columbus? What did he do? 
I then had to write out a bit of an outline to organize my thoughts. It took probably 20 hours to do that episode, and then a couple hours to record and a couple hours to produce and distribute. That's a lot of time compared to let's just fire up the old Zoom and have a chit-chat about Christopher Columbus Day and wing it. Right? That's a lot easier. But is the value for your listener going to be nearly as important? So how do you find a clear direction? How do you find your voice? For me, it's been a few things. Number one, just practicing, just doing the show. Two, constantly surveying my audience, talking to my patrons, talking to listeners. What do you like? What do you get value out of? I've done surveys for a long time to try and figure out what people like. Sometimes that has led me to do things on my show that would, I let them get in my own head and eventually drifted from my voice, from my mission. So the next step is just always keeping a very clear purpose. For me, my main goal with podcasting is building communities and bringing people together. That is a core value that I hold that I find is incredibly important. People are very lonely. They want to build communities. They want interaction. They just don't know how to do it. So that's why I talk on podcasting and platforms about finding that thing you're nerdy about and building a community. For me, it was libertarianism, and I built a great community. But through that process, I'm bringing people from different strands and even other different ideologies in to have conversations about these contentious current event situations to model how to have these conversations without screaming at each other. For the pat down, it's a sneaky way to do racial reconciliation and for me to be vulnerable and to learn a little bit more about black culture, which I did not grow up around, I don't understand, and to challenge my own biases and understandings. So everything I do really amounts to how can I use my skill set to bring people together, to get people to cooperate, and ultimately to build a freer world. Because I believe that if people are in community with each other and they're connecting with each other and they're cooperating with each other, then we're going to have a more free society, a less paranoid society, a less angry society, and it's better for our personal growth. That is my core value as a podcaster, and anything that doesn't connect to that core value, I don't do. There are some shows that I do that probably don't connect to that value, and it just doesn't feel right anymore because I've just internalized that to a very big degree. So how did I get there? I surveyed my audience. I asked them what they liked out of it, what value they got from our show. I thought deeply about what I care about. I wrote what I cared about. I my own assumptions. I put myself into situations that made me deeply uncomfortable and feel vulnerable, that made me pick and choose what I truly believe. So bottom line is you have to just do it and you have to not do it the lazy way, not do it the easy way, but always remember that you are as a podcaster or content creator serving an audience that is incredibly selfish that only cares about what you can offer them and want to be served. And if you serve them, then they will bring that back to you. My show started out with a bunch of friends sitting around talking because we thought we were interesting. It took us a long time to be interesting, but we just kept doing it and we figured out the formula that worked for us and the values that we really wanted to instill. The last thing I would say in finding that voice was also engaging in the community around that niche interest and having conversations. Sometimes I didn't always do that in the libertarian world the right way. I was fighting as opposed to conversing. And there are some people that want to just fight because that's how they gain more engagement for their social media. That's worthless junk. That's like junk food. But I would go and network. I would go to Porkfest and I would go to conventions and I would go on other podcasts and I would have conversations with people that didn't agree with me about tactics or ideology and that would help shape me. So engaging with the community I think is also another big way to help you find that clear direction. I think if you feel a little bit down because you've done what most podcasters do, which is go after the shiny thing. If I just make this look really cool and your podcast looks really cool and you have a great logo and you're on video and you're doing all the right things technically, but it's not bringing you joy, 
that's a content problem. And most people who kind of focus on the next piece of gear they can buy as opposed to what how they're trying to serve the audience flame out after a few episodes because it's almost an insecurity thing. Like, I don't know that I think enough or know enough or can do this well enough to get audience, so I need to make it look really cool. I totally went through that. We Are Libertarians was always the best-sounding podcast I could make it. I spent thirty grand easily when I didn't have it buying equipment in the early years of this to make it sound good because I didn't feel comfortable in my own skin to be vulnerable, to be open. But man, once I hit 2017 and really started to think about what am I doing with my time here, how am I serving my audience? My podcasting career has been so much more fruitful, so much more enjoyable than when I was focusing on the tech and spending money I didn't have. I bought a lot of video equipment last year because I needed to, but I have really not spent much on audio equipment. And I used to spend crazy amounts on audio equipment because I was just, or software for the website or you know, trying to build out the platform. And it was just like a distraction from getting uncomfortable with my broadcasting. So you have to really do a little self-examination if you're not happy with what you're doing. Why is that? It's probably because you're not being vulnerable enough and you're not engaging with enough people in a way that makes you a little uncomfortable. Thank you for writing in, Alan. I wish you the best. Thank you for your service. We really do appreciate everything that you do. And thank you for listening to Podcasting and Platforms. Go to podcastingandplatforms.com. You can find a link there for coaching. You can find a link there for the toolbox. So if you want to find some equipment to buy because you're distracting yourself from really getting real with your audience, then you can find suggestions there. Make sure you sign up for the email. And we really appreciate you having, having you here on Podcasting and Platforms with Chris Spangle.